Welcome to Sisters in Crime Australia and Murder Mondays, when authors talk about their crime craft. I'm Karina Kilmore, a debut crime writer, a journalist and a national convener for Sisters in Crime. And we've been celebrating women's crime writing since 1991. Before I introduce Meg Mundell, we acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present. Meg, welcome. Thanks, Karina. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. And, of course, congratulations again on winning the 2020 David Award for Best Adult Novel. Oh, it's just amazing. Thank you so much. It has really uh, turned a horrible year uh, upside down in a good way. <laughs> Like me, you come from New Zealand and have ended up in Melbourne as an author. Your David winning book, The Trespassers, is your second novel, but it's your first foray into crime writing. The Trespassers was also shortlisted for the Norma K. Hemming Award and an Aurelius Award for science fiction. And drum roll, it's already been optioned for TV. <laughs> Welcome to the world of crime writing and Murder Mondays. Before we get to the questions, can you please give us your elevator pitch for your award-winning novel, The Trespassers? Okay. Uh, the Trespassers is a literary thriller set on a migrant ship in the near future. Uh, it's a crucible kind of situation, uh, and it's set in the midst of a global pandemic which was just a very strange coincidence. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. Thank you. Now, well, let's get to our questions. What is your writing routine? Uh, put the bum on the chair, uh, drink the coffee, uh, get the child away. <laughs> been very difficult to do that for the past seven months and uh, go for a, a daily word target and when I've done that and edit edited as well when I've done that I cross out the little square so I can see a bunch of squares proceeding across the grid so I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Fantastic. What research did you do for your novel? So much research mm -hmm. very distracting lots of fun um, uh, I had to research pandemics, how you contain outbreaks. I had to research what a virus does to the body and how you nurse somebody when they're really sick. I had to research how to kill somebody uh, in various ways, quite a few different um, uh and then how long does it take a body to rot in seawater? Uh, my browser history looked very, very bad. <laughs> um, and also accents and and uh, local sort of vernacular for the Irish, English, and Scottish uh, characters. Yeah. Does your main character ever surprise you? Oh, they do all the time, and that's the magical thing. That's I, what I think is the most fun when you're writing, when your characters start to do things as if they've come to life of their own accord, and they. They do surprise you, and it's the spookiest, weirdest, and best thing about writing, I think. Fabulous. What's the scariest thing in your novel? I think the scariest thing is the little boy Cleary is being, he knows something, and he knows somebody did something bad, and that person knows he knows and he's a little boy who's deaf, he's on a ship, he's by himself for much of the time, and the, the, it's menacing. This guy, there's one scene where he almost catches him and that scared, that even scared me while I was writing it. I know that scene, it's so terrifying. <laughs> it's scary, yeah. isn't it? His whole journey is terrifying, isn't it, Cleary's journey? It's, yeah. It's, oh. Who should play your central character on the screen? Um, I'd like PJ Harvey to play Billy, but she'd have to, like, roughen up a bit and get more tough and swear more. She's got a very lovely little voice like that. She'd have to be much more hardcore, but she's a singer too. Um, 
I reckon Dev Patel would be really good as um, the teacher um, because he's just got these very soulful eyes and I think he'd be really good with, with kids. Um, and that's Tom, the teacher. And um, the little boy, look, I just think the kid who played the little boy in E.T., but then we'd have to go back. He's probably older than me now. We'd yeah. go back in the time machine and get him when he was little. Fantastic. How do you approach representing diverse communities? In my book, uh, the people on the ship are sort of a microcosm of multicultural the world that we live in. So um, it was tricky because I don't want to say somebody, somebody's skin colour all the time, you know, mm -hmm. to, to indicate that diversity. So I tried to do that with names or uh, observations from other characters of, you know, the diversity. Um, the teacher Tom um, is gay. There's a there's a bit, quite a safe love scene in there. Um, uh, I guess I'm kind of gender um, diverse myself. Um, and with the uh, deaf character, I had to really, really carefully research that I didn't want to get it wrong. I wanted to honour people's experiences. So I did lots of research. And then I got a sensitivity um, reader, um, Jessica White, who's a very accomplished novelist and writer herself. To um, I paid her to do a thorough read and give me some very frank feedback um, to help me uh, do justice to Cleary's lived experience. Yeah, fantastic. What's the hardest part about writing a novel? Um, I think it's a, uh, time and uh, money uh, because you, you have to you still have to pay the bills and you you, you have to uh, you still have to live. You know, I, I I'm I'm not um, making a living off my fiction. Um, so it's a kind of a privileged position that I have a partner who helps to, you know, pay our bills. Um, yeah, time and money. Yeah. Do you start with plot or character or something else? I usually start with place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I start with place and then I the characters come to me in the place and I might have a premise but I don't have a story until I have the characters and I know them and then they, they help tell me what the story is going to be and how it will unfold. But place comes first. Terrific. So are you a plotter or a pantser? I'm a pantser trying to be a plotter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I love that uh, quote, uh, writing a novel is like driving a car at night. I think it's Dr O. You can only see as far as the headlights, but you can make the whole journey that way. So I like to see a little bit ahead, but not too far because then I, 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 I fear I'll get bored. But I, I did have to plot more with this novel because crime needs plot. So I, I really, I, I tried to um, uh, not be such a pantser this time. <laughs> well, it worked. <laughs> How many drafts do you write before handing it in? Oh, oh so many. Uh, I just comb through again and again and again as I'm writing and I, as I write. But I actually threw away half of this book and rewrote the second half because it was like it was it didn't it was like two books. It didn't it suddenly got all light. The second half got all light. It's like I didn't want to stay in the darkness. I, I so I, I, I had to throw it away and and start again. So many, 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 many drafts. Wow. Gosh. How much of you is in one of your characters? I think the teacher, Tom, his voice came very easily to me. He's not really like me completely, but I just his voice just came through almost effortlessly. So I suspect maybe I'm a gay male school teacher addicted to um, futuristic um, antidepressants. I don't know. <laughs> What's your top writing tip and what's your top self-editing tip? Um, my top writing tip. Uh, someone once said to me, first thought, best thought. So I guess get it down. Get it down without censoring yourself too much, I think. Uh, my top editing tip is 
pare it back, uh, mm -hmm. get rid of the fluff, uh, streamline it and, um, yeah, pare it back, I think. Yeah. Do you think that's the journalist in you? Possibly. It could be, yeah, having to write to word count perhaps, um, but also the way I like to read. I like, I don't like to go divert too much. I, I like to feel like I'm, there's momentum that I'm getting carried along a bit. Yeah, lovely. Oh, this is perfect for you. How important is place in your writing? <laughs> Oh, very, very important. Uh, I just find place such a fascinating lens to look at the world through. Uh, the Point Nepean quarantine station down on mm -hmm. the Mornington Peninsula was what actually first inspired the book. I went there and it was just such a beautiful, incredible place with this, this sad history and this significant history, uh, the first quarantine station in Australia. And then, but you can sort of think of a place as anything, you know, like your favourite chair's a place. Mm. Um, and being on a ship, even though it's not really a place, it's moving, that can be a place too. So I like, that's how I kind of, I get inside my characters and I think that they're there and I see and feel the place and the space around me. And that's kind of how I write. So it's kind of at the core of, of how I write, I think. Yeah. How much of a profile of each character do you do before you write? I, I have a, I know what they look like. Uh, I know their name, although I, Billy's name I changed. I did change a couple of times until I got the right one. Uh, I start writing once I know them a, a little bit and then I, they kind of let me know more about them, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. yeah. I give Absolutely. them a bio, yeah, but then they tell me more about themselves. Yeah. Tell us something not in your book about a main character. Um, something that I took out or that's not in there. Um, I think Tom. I I think Tom is a runner. He goes running, but that's not in there. Yeah. I just I don't know why, but he's uh, he, he runs to deal with his anxiety, but it's not mentioned at all in the book. As a lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our last question for today, Meg, how would you get away with murder? I'd be, I'd be ter I don't think I would. I always, I've always have dreams that I've committed a murder and I'm, I'm by accident and I'm going to get caught. It's, it's very stressful. Uh, I, the answer is I wouldn't get away with murder, but if I did have to, I would administer a poison. I would administer a poison. I'm not, I, I'm not good with gore. I couldn't really chop somebody up. I'd have to sneakily poison them, then, then sidle away. Poison's very popular with the sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Meg, thank you for being with us on Murder Mondays today. Thanks, Karina. And I've got to say, Kilmore, best name for a crime. <laughs> so good. Kilmore, Karina. <laughs> thank you.